Surprises what? <laughs> Granville, fetch your cloth. <laughs> We're not reducing things all that much, so you have no right to go having us a slash on that window. <laughs> I think I'm still in love with a milk woman. Aren't you sure? I keep buying yoghurt. Perhaps you're in love with yoghurt? No, I don't like yoghurt. <laughs> I don't understand yoghurt. People say it's still alive. They couldn't make that mistake in your case, could they? <laughs> I like to start the morning with a clean pair of boots. Personally, I prefer a boiled egg. <laughs> oh, dear. Errand boy jokes. He's still half asleep. He's giving me errand boy jokes. Well, I may possibly be giving you the slight impression that I'm half asleep. The always are modest. It's had a damn good impression. <laughs> I'm not surprised with all the practice I get here every morning for donkey's years. Anyway, some people need more sleep than others. Maybe my father liked to linger in bed. He, did, he didn't linger longer in your mother's, did he? <laughs> he was off before she got his name. <laughs> Look, if he happened to be Hungarian, it would be a difficult name to get, wouldn't it? Eh? Hey, and anyway, that reminds me, what do you mean, errand boy jokes? I would like to remind you that I am the assistant manager in this establishment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, that's true enough. Peddling a shop bike, sweeping the pavement, washing windows. A manager should be competent in all departments. Oh, I'd like my father to be proud of me, whoever he was. <laughs> a manager should be on his toes. I bet my father was on his toes. Well, he'd have to be if it was your height, wouldn't he? <laughs> we may be small, us Hungarians, but we're neat. And we make wonderful horsemen. You lot, get off. You can't even make we're wonderful sandwiches. <laughs> we're very passionate. Love means everything to us Hungarians. Yeah, it also means you're half asleep. Your shopkeeping half, that is. Your social activities half is always we're wide awake, isn't it? No, 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 no. I may look as though I'm half asleep, but underneath I'm fully alert and I'm spreading boot polish on my piece of bread. <laughs> Why do you put boot polish on the breakfast table? So you can use spread it on your bread. <laughs> I know what your trouble is. Your trouble is that you don't think I can do anything right. <laughs> something about that door. Uh, how do you mean, my, my love? It's stiff. Spend some money and have it attended to. It's getting harder to open than your wallet. Oh. <laughs> have a small brown loaf and a malt, please. No, I'm sorry, love, they haven't got to come yet. Oh, well, save them for me. Oh, well. What sort of house is you that has boot polish on the table for breakfast? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing to your granville? He looks down in the dumps this morning. Well, it is size. He could hardly look up in the dumps, could he? <laughs> have you been nagging him? Nagging him? But when, when do I nag him? Have you ever stopped to wonder why he ended up that size? If you hadn't nagged him so much, he could have been six foot four. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just happens to be one of those I wonder who me father was days. Well, why don't you try and cheer him up, poor lad? I made him under manager, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and do something about this door. Actually, I only want a little bit taken off, Gordon, just so I can open it without it uh, sticking, you see. Try it now. Right. <laughs> Is that better? 
better. You can call that better. It could be twice as good as that. It'd still be worse, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'll take a bit more off. Yeah, you're not, not much of a wizard with the old uh, toolkit, are you, Gordon? Eh? I don't profess to be. Oh, I thought you were a dedicated to do it yourself. Uh. It's the wife that decided I was a dedicated do-it-yourself. Oh, that explains it, yeah. Left to my own devices, I'm more your keen amateur idle beggar. <laughs> well, uh, put it this way, Gordon, if it works, you've done me a favour. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll just stick this screwdriver in your ear. <laughs> you probably won't have to bother. I'll probably do it myself. <laughs> the one thing about this job I've got a flair for is injuring myself. <laughs> Let him get away, Gordon. It looked like I've a potential good customer, that. He's a foreigner. Well, they're, they're the best kind. Sometimes you can talk that lot into anything, you know. I mean, there was a time we even convinced the Germans we'd won the war. <laughs> He's not a German. He's one of those unpronounceable backward mob where no tourist ever goes twice. Oh, uh, well, Welsh, is he? <laughs> He's not Welsh. He's Bulgarian, Hungarian or something. He's over there on a holiday looking up the people he met the last time he was here in the late 1940s. Hungarian? Look at that. Glides like a piece of silk. Late in the 1940s? Your door's fixed. Yeah, yeah, shut it on the way out, will you, Gordon? <laughs> You don't look Hungarian. Dressed like this, I don't even look human. <laughs> I think I do look Hungarian. All right, well, whereabouts then? Whereabouts do you think you look uh, Hungarian? Is it your elbow or what? Nothing that shows that I look Hungarian. Well, I've got, uh, you know, the uh, high cheekbones. How can there someone of your size have high cheekbones? <laughs> You've only just got low cheekbones. <laughs> Anyway, the milkwoman reckons I've got gypsy-looking eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Neither tax nor insured, I know. <laughs> anyway, some days I just feel Hungarian. You were her feeling the milkwoman when I called you. <laughs> I was not. She was just showing me her bruises. Oh, oh, oh bruises. Is, is that what she calls them? They're not their bruises. They're yoghurt stings, they are. <laughs> you want to be careful. I'm warning you, our Granville. You don't mess with their dairy products that best left untampered. You can't mess about with these strange, regenerative, mutating things. Don't blame me if for one moonlit night a great evil 30-foot yoghurt comes slurping down the corner of the street. <laughs> Be ridiculous. Well, look, what do you keep on looking at me like that for? I've just realised at her very moment how like your mother you are. Oh, do you think so? Yeah, she, she couldn't bake either. <laughs> <laughs> That's rubbish. <laughs> no, it's a special order for Mrs. Muckerjee. <laughs> One of these days, get Granville, all this will be yours. Yeah, well, I don't want it all in one load. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, go you're going to sleep again, Granville. I'm not going to, not going to sleep again. I'm falling over and awake. Uh, allow me to lighten the load for you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. One bag of self-raising flour. Thank you. A great help. Oh. I didn't I didn't hear the bell. No bell. It makes no noise. He moves like very quiet. Oh, there does he? I see. Yes. Oh, it's back up, back up, back up. Hey, Would you excuse me, please? I just want to have a, a word with my deputy assistant on the manager. Back up, back up. Oh, will you? Oh, be a moment, sir. What are you doing? Put that lot down. Oh, I've already just picked them up. Just put, put them down. Oh, pick them up, girl, Randville. Put them down, girl, Randville. Move them there, girl, Randville. Move them there, girl, Randville. I'm going to be bow-legged. I shall end up with legs like a rickshaw coolie. 
Yeah. Oh, him and my move are very uh, so quiet, uh, does he? He who? What are you talking about? Him, him, we've got a father in the shop. What? We've got, we've got a, a customer in the shop, <laughs> Granville. A customer. Well, what's wrong with that? We occasionally do have the odd customer. I know that uh, this one looks very, very un untrustworthy. Put your cap over your eyes. I don't want him to see your face, you yeah, see. Why not? No, no, trust me, Granville, trust me. He looks a very sinister standing in there, sneaky foreign devil. He wormed his way in without her ringing the bell, you know. I must have that door altered again. What's he doing? Well, he's just her standing there looking foreign. <laughs> Trouble is. How long has he been standing there? That's why worrying me. His pockets might be full of our goodies by now, you know. Hey, what do you mean he's a shoplifter? Absolutely, yes. Looks as though he's got an honest face. Honest face? You call that an honest face? That's the sort of face that used to throw bombs, try to hit archdukes in the baby in the baby in the Balkans. <laughs> I'm going in there to keep him talking. You are going to check his pockets. How? How am I going to check his pockets? Look, there's no point in me having a deputy assistant under manager if I have to think of everything myself, do I? Hey, come on. Open the door. Oh, right. Follow me. I'll go first. Ah, yeah, that's it. Say hello to the nicer foreign gentleman, Gay Granville. Ah, oh, hello. No, 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 don't, don't take your hat off. No, he's he's liable to a little bit, a bit of insanity if his head gets cold, you see. <laughs> yeah. Static. Oh, he, ca he, said he called you static. <laughs> it's probably foreign for illegitimate. <laughs> no, me, I... I'm static. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> How nasty for you. Fancy coming all this way and then feeling static. <laughs> it's, it's probably the water where you come from. You, you wouldn't want to live there, Granville, where they have to be boil everything, would you? Uh, you, everything, you have to be boil. Be boil. Oh, dear, he, he stutters as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, imagine, I mean, it's bad enough having a... Um, it's, it's, um, it's bad enough having a... Uh, 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 bad enough having a, uh, a slight impediment in English. But, I mean, imagine uh, stuttering your way through a, a foreign tetong. Tetong? <laughs> speaks Chinese as well. <laughs> oh. You see, all these languages to us, they're all, uh, they're all gob and nostrils to us. <laughs> If you go speaking them here, people just uh, sit on your chest and give you artificial respiration. <laughs> Come on, Granville, Operation uh, Frisk. Come no, on, Frisk. Oh, no, I can't. Yes, I you can't. must, Granville. Will you attend to the customer, please, Granville, and keep your hat well down? <laughs> I don't mean you're going insane again. Now, come on. <laughs> Off you go. That's it. <laughs> come on, good morning. Oh, what is this? Oh! <laughs> Never mind all clicking at him. You just, just get on with it. There we are, sir. Thank you. Just turn that way, would you, please? What you do? Oh, it's just a little about a private service uh, given by the small uh, shopkeeper, sir. As a matter of fact, there's only me and Harrods doing this now. Harrods? <laughs> <laughs> what is Harrods? Uh, which is a slightly bigger shop further down the road. <laughs> there we are. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> please. I want no personal attentions. Oh, are you sure? So, I mean, this little lad, if you took your coat off, he could run his iron over it for you, couldn't you, lad? <laughs> it's all right. No, well, please yourself, sir, please yourself, but he has a very good reputation as a presser. You ask the milkwoman. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds to be a fine thing. Take your jacket off, eh? Take oh. your jacket well, off. What do you take my jacket off for? Because it's hot in here. No, it's not hot in here. <laughs> oh, it's hot in here! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he's, he's taking his jacket off. Yes, he's quite right. It's a good idea, that. It is very hot in here, isn't it? We use him as a little th thermometer, you know. Yes, it's very hot. It's the Gulf Stream, of course. But you are many miles <laughs> from the sea. Oh, yes, but the canal's only two streets away, you know. <laughs> it's a very humid round there on a Friday night, I can tell you. No, the Englishman has got the sea in his blood, of course. Well, it's not all, of course. It's, a, it's quite a lot of uh, brown ale and, and fluoride as well. <laughs> oh, now I've bent me chocolate. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I shall be up half the night for putting a cardboard splint in that now. <laughs> Please. Hmm? Please. I want woman. Oh, no, we don't sell women, only groceries. <laughs> we don't find there's a lot of call for women round here. No. <laughs> Everyone who wants one seems to have got one already. Please. Mm. Old sweetheart. No, no good trying to flatter me, old darling. That was <laughs> 
Can I put my coat back on? No, you can't put your coat back on. Oh, come on, it's cold in here. It is not cold in here. <laughs> it's cold in here. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Mrs. Parslow. No, it's not cold in here. Not uh, not for St. Albert's Day. No, it's a very, very mild for St. Albert's Day. St. Albert's, Albert's Day? St. Albert's Day. It's a heap of big uh, festival in these whereabouts. Oh, holiday. Well, it's a sort of a half holiday, yes. What's he talking about, <laughs> St. Albert? Would you sir, serve Mrs. Parslow, please, Granville? This gentleman were first. I am a... <laughs> I am de dealing with this gentleman, Mrs. Parslow. <laughs> what would you like, Mrs. Parslow? <laughs> Foreign, is he? Well, it looks like that, Mrs. Parslow. Eee, don't they have some funny ways? Now, Mr. Static, uh, what can I do for you on this fine St. Albert's Day? Please. I look for woman. Oh, See I what I mean? <laughs> Why have you got your cap down there? Oh. Got no idea, it's his idea. You look like an idiot. I'm past caring. <laughs> No, you see, we don't really go looking for women on St Albert's Day. No, the most we ever take off are our jackets. Jackets? People take off their jackets? Are you still here, Mrs Parslow? <laughs> yes, a gentleman, before he's allowed to shake hands with another on St Albert's Day, must remove his jacket. I've never heard of it. There are more things in heaven and earth, Mrs Parslow, than I dreamt of in your b -b -b back parlour. <laughs> Would you serve this lady, please, at once? I'll have half a dozen pikelets. Now, now, let me show you, Mr Static. What happens, then you'll be ready for it uh, when it does, won't you? That's it. But both coats, there we go. It's necessary to remove the jacket. Oh, yes, absolutely essential. Yes, it will cause deep yes. resentment in the other party if you don't remove your jacket. Oh, yes. There we are, Granville. Uh, the frisk mark, too. Off you go. Now, then, uh, hand through their leg like that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Have a grab of it. That's the idea. <laughs> such rubbish. You must have done. He's fluent in rubbish. He speaks it like a native. Come along. Oh. Your turn. <laughs> Happy St. Albert's Day. That's a good idea. <laughs> You're next, Mrs. Parslow. <laughs> you thought he was my father, didn't you, eh? Never could cross me mind. Look at me when you're lying to me. <laughs> what's for their dinner? Never mind what's for their, their dinner. You did, you thought he was my father, didn't you, eh? It's an Albert's day. I wish he had been my father. I think it's romantic. I think it's pathetic. <laughs> she, he didn't even know her name. All he got was a couple of scars and an old uh, blurred photograph. Oh, well, that's how it is with us Hungarians, eh? Imagine, one night of love, and he's never forgotten it. And neither did it. Tommy Wilcox forget his. He had to go all the way to London for his. <laughs> he was underneath these are railway arches. People used to have flocked to railway arches in them days. Well, at times were hard. And then nobody who was still young enough to be frisky could have afforded a motor car. <laughs> Love was an out-the-door activity in them days of a brisk and, and a bracing. The moral decline of their, this nation can be directly traceable to the time when they started for frolicking indoors. <laughs> of course, I see bedrooms that kept things sane for a while. But then along come the central eating and brought overindulgence into the reach of the world working classes. <laughs> what about Tommy Wilcox? Who? Him that was under the railway arches. Oh, yeah. A loop of his braces got caught on a passenger shunting engine. <laughs> he was plucked untimely from the arms of his beloved. <laughs> Rubbish. He was later found her wandering near Clapham Junction <laughs> without his hat. <laughs> circumstance which must have given rise to a great deal of speculation as at that time you were never seen without your hat anywhere you do tell me some flannel don't you eh? oh no i assure you granville people wore their hats upon all occasions except uh, under railway arches and in the bath right. <laughs> your door's fixed oh is it good, good and stiff gordon good and stiff oh good so the next uh, jangle we hear will be an authentic uh, jangle Right, good, because I've been uh, hopping up and down here like a pantomime fairy. 
<laughs> I've never been to a pantomime. He's never been to a pantomime? No. no. Never had a father to take me, did I? Oh. Just had this wicked uncle. What a pity. <laughs> Now, don't start complaining. You never to tell people who bought you a nice, a shiny bicycle for your 11th birthday, do you? Oh, no. Just what us little Hungarian horsemen needs, that is a shock bike. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it to develop his uh, muscles, Gordon. I mean, I know he's small, but thanks to me, he's perfectly formed. Have you seen his calf muscles? I am not showing me calf muscles. <laughs> he must have uh, what is possibly the world's uh, strongest uh, little uh, short legs. It looks pretty enough. Oh, yeah. yes. It's emotionally that I've been neglected. I keep on hoping against hope that somebody new and exciting is going to come into your life. Well, that's her. probably them now. I should go and have a look. Go on. <laughs> It, it's that foreign fellow that's upset him, Gordon. Him and his blurred photograph. I'll have to do something about it. He's getting worse and worse. Listen, can you hold the fort here? I'm going over there to talk to Nurse Gladys Emanuel. Right. <laughs> nobody in the shop? What do you mean, nobody in the shop? Well, go see for yourself. That's funny. I heard the bell go. Do you fancy a drink, Gordon? I thought you'd never ask. Uh, mash that tea bag a bit harder, would you? <laughs> <laughs> It'll stave off the pangs of hunger, Gordon. Looking for his old sweetheart? Yeah, uh, that's what that's what he said. Yes. And going round showing this old photograph? Yeah, the uh, big girl with a blurred face. <laughs> I think that's a lovely story. Yeah. It's quite touching. I hope he finds her. What are you looking at me like that for? I was just wondering what you were like in 1949. What do you mean? You weren't a baby big girl with a blurred face, were you? <laughs> You'll be out on your ear in a minute. How very dare you. I'll have you know I was a small girl with a freckly face. Oh. <laughs> All right, Milo, I don't mind you getting mad at me, as long as your habits were never her Hungarian. No, I'm worried about the Granville, you know. Uh, he's getting moodier and moodier. I think he might, might do something stupid. Like what? Well, he's getting so desperate, I think he might fly right off the handle and, and give someone too much change. <laughs> <laughs> will, will you help me out in a little bit of a white lie? What kind of white lie? It's not one of your crafty schemes to increase his hours or cut his pocket money, is it? Pocket money? Wages! I give him a wages, damn it. Wages? Three pound a week? <laughs> And all the Spanish comforts he can eat. It's Hungarian comforts he's more interested in at the moment, poor love. But what is this little white lie you want me to purge my soul with? Come on. Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. Look, look, put your coat on, leave all this and come over for a cup of tea, will you? I want to get him off this Hungarian attack and, uh, and on to someone else. Look, uh, sit down there and, uh, and I'll uh, fill in your background, as the sailor said. <laughs> Hello, love. Oh, hello. Oh, Gordon's gone. He suddenly remembered that he had to go and unblock Mrs. Horner's overflow. Oh, I'm not surprised the amount of her brown ale that woman puts away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Getting her nurse glad he said, Cup, come on, she's come for a, a cup of tea and a biscuit. We were uh, just uh, reminiscing over her ironing. Oh, go on. My underwear's not as old as all that. <laughs> no, no. No, uh, we were talking about the, uh, the royal of her visit. Do you remember? No, which royal visit was that then? Oh, it was the old king. He come up here in uh, 1949. He used to stutter as well, you know, old King George. Yeah. We used to listen to him on the wireless on Christmas Day. He was responsible for many a cold Christmas dinner, he was. <laughs> Waiting for him to finish. <laughs> no, but he came up to Leeds, you know, with a lot of uh, foreign dignitaries. Well, foreign dignitaries? Hmm. When was this, then? Oh, well, it was way before your time, Miss Granville. It was, uh, well, let's say it must have been, uh, it must have been about uh, nine months before your time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it, it couldn't be, could it? I mean, no, no not on a, a royal visit, could it? Well, I don't see why not. I mean, they have to have some relaxation. Yeah, of course they do. Who do? Well, we don't remember. It was a duke of some sort. We don't remember, you see. Foreign, was he? 
Hungarian. No, that's the point. He wasn't a uh, foreign at all. He was an English duke, you see. He come up to Doncaster for the races. Uh, you, you remember they had all of her flags all out in the street, didn't they, Gladys? Eh? Oh, yes, we had a tea party in the street outside the school. That's right, yeah. He was a little fella. He was, he was a little fella, yes. Very smart, but little with it. I'm little with it. Yes, he had... <laughs> he had uh, 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 gypsy eyes, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> nah, rubbish. I mean, what are the chances of me being related to him? Which duke was it? <laughs> That's the trouble. We, uh, we don't remember which duke it was. Well, damn it, you should remember. I mean, heaven's sake, I could be, you know, seventh in line for the... Well, 27th anyway, eh? <laughs> no, there, there, there couldn't be anything in it, Bureau Granville. No, no, we're on the uh, wrong track there. The, the only thing is that the, your mother, you see, did happen to be working at Doncaster Racecourse at the time as a, as a waitress. And very tasty she looked too in her little white frilly apron. Uh, and she, she suddenly disappeared for two days. <laughs> and when she come back, she had a big a secret smile on her face and she was clutching two enormous tins of a royal Doncaster butterscotch. <laughs> I've always liked butterscotch. <laughs> oh, you see, it might be hereditary. <laughs> Getting more uncanny by the second. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, but it can't be him. He's Hungarian. Oh yes. Well, who said who said I was Hungarian? You said you were uh, Hungarian. Well, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at you in the light. Just stand up. Let's just let's see if there's any a lineal resemblance. cheered him up <laughs> but he'll be uh, hell to live with now <laughs> oh this oh there's nobody in the shop I'll, I'll kill them kids if they, if they, if they... oh god he's, he's stuck again it's not kids at all it's customers they've been bashing at the door then going away thinking i'm going closed oh dear i've been sitting there losing about four fortunes i see old fella would you mind not jingling that bill <laughs> One's ears are delicate, you know. <laughs> oh, I do, but beg your pardon, I'm sure. <coughs> Would your royal alonist mind getting his cycle clips on and going and dragging Gordon out of Mrs. Heather Horner's overflow? <laughs> Tell him I want him down here on affairs of the state. State? Yes, I'm, I'm a main one. <laughs> I wonder how much I lost through that damn door. Oh, well, some days you just have to take the rough with the rough. It's been a funny St Albert's day. <laughs> I wonder if that Hungarian found his girl. Girl. <laughs> She'd be a right old boiler by now. <laughs> oh, Lord, let me make that money back tomorrow. And perhaps a bit extra for a rainy day. <laughs> and please, Lord... Try and change our Granville's mind. He's going to look ridiculous with a monocle. <laughs> <laughs>